years old. He said, Shane, he says, I hate to tell you this, he said, but even with surgery or chiropractic treatment, he said, you're always going to have back problems. And Shane said, well, I don't receive that. He says, I believe that Jesus is going to heal me. And so you're watching all this. I'm watching right? this locked in a cell. God has a captive audience. <laughs> and he's got me between an ex-drug dealer who was at the higher levels and telling me it ain't going to work. It's empty. And in front of a born-again chiropractor who's saying you're going to have... Here's what happened. Sal went to go listen to his radio because the words between Sal and Shane were kind of terse at that point. Because one is science and the other one is, is the supernatural. And God certainly works through doctors. But when doctors can't do it, God will do exceedingly abundantly more than we can think or ask. So as an unsaved person, I'm watching this. And now I'm kind of participating with Bible studies with them and uh, listening. And I remember this. Shane was on a bunk here. I was on a bunk here. And Sal was on the third one in back. And I look back and Sal's listening to his radio. And he's opening his Bible. And he's kind of angry because of the science versus the supernatural. But they're both Christians. And... Shane is kind of standing for his faith. And I'm sitting there, and finally I, I said this. I said, God, and, and they were listening to uh, a preacher, an evangelist, who I won't give the name of, but he did a radio program, and he would always pray this prayer of faith at the end. And I listened to this guy a couple of times with my little radio, and, you know, it was AM, and so I'm kind of like <laughs> balancing it in this metal and steel building to try to get, you know, reception, and I wasn't listening to him that day, but God was drawing me, and I said this prayer. I said, God, I said, if you're really up there, and if you still heal today, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for Shane, who claims to be your servant. If you still do that, I'm asking you to and God set me up to pray that prayer so that he could answer the prayer. And God is my witness, and both Sal and Shane are witnesses, and the medical documentation is witness. This is what I saw. And the only way I can describe it is to tie it in with the movie Predator, when, you know, the Predator's running through the wilderness, and you kind of, like, see him, you can't see him. He's got, like, this cloaking <laughs> device on. Or like you can see the wind, but you can't see the wind. You can see it. I, I don't know how to describe it, but I could see it, but I couldn't see it. It was, it was, it was clear. And it came down, and it rested upon Shane's head like a gel came down upon him. And I'm from here to here. And Shane's got his headphones on, praying the prayer of faith, and I've just prayed this prayer, and I'm seeing it. And all of a sudden, I hear audibly as it goes down over his shoulders and backs. Praise God. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking. Wow. And Shane gets, Sal gets up. Now remember, they've had this terse conversation. Sure. And Sal, who's a Christian, gets up. And Shane literally jumps off the bed. And he gets up. Now remember, this is a guy that's like this. And he bends down. And he bends down a second time. And he bends down a third time and he touches his toes. And the fourth time he puts his palms, which I can't do, <laughs> flat down on the cement floor. And he says, I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus. I'm healed. And Sal comes over and he says, let me examine you. He says, no, you're not going to steal my miracle from me. <laughs> and I'm watching this science versus a supernatural God, you know, that we all claim to serve. And, and, and Sal says, no, he says, I was just over there repenting for what I had said to you, Shane. He says, God convicted my heart, and I was praying that God would heal you. He said, God's miracles can be proved or sustain a scientific test. And saying, Shane said, okay, that makes sense. So he laid down, and all of his hands were back in the correct positions. And all of the coloration was there. And 
Shane was miraculously healed with a creative miracle before my eyes. Now you ask, did I get born again at that point? I was going to say, did that convince you of anything? It convinced me that the God that Shane had was real. But there was two things that were barriers for me. One, did I really want to repent? And two, did I really believe that God would accept me back in my current filthy state? And was God's grace really sufficient to cleanse me of all sin? Did he really want me back or had I gone too far? Because you've done a lot of stuff, man. I had done right. a lot of stuff. Yeah. Nine out of the ten, I broke them. And there was, there was I'm not going to tell you which one I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as parole was concerned, it wasn't looking good for you, right? Well, no, we were looking at life without the possibility of parole. And uh, the judge had sentenced us on one case and made the statement. Uh, he said, I wish I could give you more time. He said, I've already doubled your sentence to the maximum allowed under the statute. If I could give you more time, I would, but I can't under the law. But the next case that they coupled with it had a maximum of life without the possibility of parole. And in prison, they call that the elbow because it looks like an L, life. And if you get your judgment and commitment papers, when they say date of release, it says decease. So it was a very serious time. But again, you know, I... I still wanted to, to fight, fight the system. I wanted to win. And, but here's what happened a couple of days later. And I had been in the county jail, and I kind of uh, twisted my ankle playing some basketball on a very unorthodox <coughs> basketball court about the size of that with about eight players. And, you know, there's not a lot of room to move around against the cement wall and, you know, off the steel fence at the roof that's about 13 feet high. And, don't have much of an arch. It's ruined my shot, by the way. <laughs> I have no arch in my shot. <laughs> it comes from 20 years ago. But uh, I can't get the ball in. <laughs> so, so what happened was I, uh, I said, God, I've got this hairline fracture in my ankle and it won't heal because I'm kind of locked in a hole and there's no sunshine and there's really not much exercise. And, and uh, I said, you know, your theology is not good as a non-believer. In fact, sometimes as believers, it's bad too. <laughs> you know, but how much bad theology can you believe and still be saved? I don't know. You're saved. I'm saved. So, <laughs> praise God. Stop judging everybody else. You know, do the best you can. Serve Jesus. You know, but but my theology wasn't very good. And, and I said, uh, I know that uh, you know I'm I kind of like a sign. You know, plus I'd like my ankle healed. But I know the only sign given is the sign of Jonah, and I don't really want to end up in the belly of a fish. I'm already in the belly of this prison. 